Welcome back to English 101. This is week 13. This is our rhetoric and writing lecture for week 13. Just a couple of things I'm going to review for quiz number four. And then also we'll talk about beginning essay number six. All right. So um, essay number six, I guess we're in the wrong order, but that's all right, is uh, on the theme of responsibility. And when I read um, the story Barn Burning by Haruki Murakami, I read it closely, talk about it with students. The themes that come up are the idea oftentimes of why does this narrator not do anything? Is he really that clueless? Because it seems like most people who read this story get to the point, if they read it carefully and think about it, that probably um, the boyfriend of the young woman who she meets uh, when she travels to Africa and comes home back to Japan with him um, is doing something wrong. He talks about burning down barns, but most people come to the conclusion that that's probably a metaphor for maybe murder just sort of disappearing someone, right? The woman disappears at the end of the story. Um, does, you know, so in any rate, however you read the story, um, I want you to think about personal responsibility. So if you think of it like that, like perhaps his, when he tells the other guy, the narrator is told that this young man who's got the money and everything in the nice car and nobody seems to know why, when he's told that uh, he's burning down barns, um, does he really take that literally? It does seem like he goes out and continues to look but if he doesn't take it literally and he realizes maybe he's killed this girl or she's disappeared for some other reason, why doesn't he do anything more? Why doesn't he take any action? Um, some people ask that question. So this idea of responsibility comes up, but we can look at that from lots and lots of different uh, viewpoints. Should people be responsible for the well-being of others in their society? That's a general question I'd like you to think about as you approach this topic. Um, for example, here's a couple of more practical examples that might not have to do directly with the story, but you could still, I think, Use the story as a springboard or a background for that. If a person knows about illegal activity, for example, domestic violence, is that person responsible to try to protect the victim? Well, definitely there are certain, you know, people in our society, teachers, doctors, you know, people like that, therapists, I think, who have a code sort of that if they find out about something, they're supposed to say something, right? But what about other people who are just uh, civilians, so to speak? Um, do they have that responsibility? Do you have that responsibility? So that's one way you could look at this topic of responsibility. During a situation like the pandemic of the last few years, what's a person's responsibilities to other in their society? Do people have responsibility for the safety of others? Or is it just kind of up to every person for him or herself? Or as we used to say, every man for himself, right? Is that what it is now? Um, if a minor commits a crime, do you think it's reasonable to hold the parent or guardian responsible or parents or guardians? And then lastly, so all these have to do, you can see just different ways of approaching responsibility, but you could also, you know, look at it in different ways too, if you can be creative and as long as you can come up with a good debatable thesis and maybe tie it back to our, um, our um, short story particularly, but also possibly to the, um, the uh, article that we read on domestic violence, you know, either of those. But um, Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. is credited with saying, quote, your right to swing your arms ends just where the other man's nose begins. So in other words, I think the point there is I can do something crazy or wild or whatever, or, you know, um, original, but once I start harming other people, it's not just my right to, to swing my fist around or do whatever I'm doing, but it becomes uh, infringing on somebody else's rights once it starts to harm them. So um, that's, that's sort of uh, what, I, what I think this quote means. But for this topic, if you wanted to think about that, what does that mean in general and how, how could it be applied during a crisis such as the pandemic that we just have kind of, I guess we're at the end of that now, it seems to be faded in many ways, but we certainly a couple of years ago, it was a high thing on the, you know, danger list. So, you know, during that pandemic, what, where is my freedom in and your freedom began and where am I infringing on your freedom? Like if I'm wearing a mask or not in public, during, especially during the height of the pandemic, not getting vaccinated or getting vaccinated. So these are you know, freedom versus the idea of responsibility can come up a lot of times. So where does that end and begin? Again, these are just ideas to get you started thinking. If you have another um, way you want to take this topic, it's definitely fine. Again, as long as you can kind of tie back to our short story um, in some way or quote from it potentially, or that one of the articles too. If you also find other uh, sources, that's fine. Just make sure if you do include them that you do, uh, you know, list them and have a, have a works cited page if you include other sources but you don't have to, it's not a research paper. And then here's our review for quiz four, <coughs> pardon me, which you can take in, um, in Blackboard. 
uh, adjectives and adverbs. I think we covered that during week 12, pretty sure in the rhetoric and writing lecture. And then colons and semicolons, um, I think we did that uh, last week actually. But um, take a look at the quiz. And then Sunny's Blues, we've talk, been talking about that story a little bit and you've been reading it. Uh, you can find the quiz in the week 13 folder. But take a look at that. And as always, if you have any questions, just let me know through email. Good luck with the quiz and with uh, getting started on essay six.